Good morning, everyone. Thanks for being here. We present the party package that permits to perform a valid double dipping. And we will use as, as example the fMRI data that are very important to, in order to understand the neural activation in the human brain. One of the most famous uh, methods used in fMRI data analysis is the cluster-wise method. In this case, we analyze a set of contiguous voxel S, and for each of these uh, uh, set, call it cluster, we have an analyze hypothesis in order to understand if uh, this, the brain activation inside that cluster is significant. Um, however, if you, we reject uh, this null hypothesis, we only know that at least one voxel is active, but we don't know how many and which ones. This is called a space specificity paradox because larger the cluster, weaker the findings. And we cannot infer inside that cluster without falling into the double dipping problem. So in this case, we can use the ARI method that stands for all resolution inference or the PARI method that is the permutation version of ARI. That these two methods permit to uh, make inference on the number of truly active boxes. So we can associate it to each cluster, the lower bound of the number of truly active boxes. And uh, the permutation structure of ARI permits to uh, account for the correlation structure between tests and both methods are, are based on the closing testing procedure for controlling the family-wise error rate. So uh, every time that you want to infer inside a data-driven cluster and not, you can use R, for example, in gene expression cluster analysis, in cluster AG data analysis, and so on, as many times as you want, because it's a simultaneous uh, inference. And uh, so I will present the main function of the package, the PARI brain function and PARI function. The first one is for the fMRI framework and the second one is for the general framework. In the first case, we need the, co the object COPS, that is a list of contrast parameter estimate involving brain activation difference for each subject in NIFTY format. Uh, we need the threshold that, uh, um, that, it, that uh, uh, constructs the clusters or the cluster map, the brain mask, and the alpha level. And for the general framework, we need the data matrix with dimension observation times variable, the feature set of interest, so the set of hypotheses, the alpha level, and the type of test that we need that we want to perform. So for example, using the auditory data that you can, that you can find in the fMRI data package. Uh, in this case, we want to analyze the neural activation between vocal and non-vocal stimuli. And so um, using these three objects and using the paribrain function, we can have an output like that. So the first line is for the first cluster that uh, uh, is the right superior temporal gyrus, plano temporale, and so on. Um, this cluster comes from uh, uh, you comes from uh, the cluster wise method using a threshold equal to 3.2 for data statistics that uh, form the uh, the clusters and we can uh, say uh, that in this first cluster we have at least 92% of uh, um, truly act active voxel but we can also drill down. And so we can use a higher threshold, for example, equal four. And in this case, we have four, four subclusters uh, inside that cluster. And we can compute the lower bound of the number of truly active voxels for each of these subclusters. We can also visualize the results in a brain map using the map TDP function. So we can see, for example, in this case, uh, we have a high uh, true discovery proportion with respect to this uh, cluster. And um, that's it. Uh, so uh, I'm here for a question, and I want to thank uh, the group uh, that work uh, on this project, the Professor Finos, Goyman, Hemerick, and Bida. And uh, thanks for your attention.